All right, guys, I am back, and I have something that I want to show you, comparing it to this thing. We are still on, yeah, we're still on this, because um, I saw a video by Cutlery Lover, and he originally unboxed battle, his battle box, not having seen anybody else's, and he was instantly fooled that this was a Damascus blade. It's actually I, kind of funny to watch, and... Some people had to correct him and say, "Hey, go watch Doc P's video." I'm just, I'm pretty proud because, you know, Cutlery Lover is a big, a big name in this game, and he put up a secondary video and he talked about me and my video uh, quite a few times, saying, "Hey, I watched this video," and, and uh, yeah, so he he's on board with the same conclusions I came to, um, but so you know, we're still there are still the 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 fanboys all up in arms and a lot of people saying, "Well, how do you 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 know." You guys are wrong. It's Damascus. Even though the company has said it's not Damascus. They've flat out, they've said it. It's not Damascus. And um, <clears throat> so, uh, even though we found the knife <laughs> on Wish.com for $25, their $100 knife. Um, so anyway, I wanted to do this video looking at something by this company, um, Citivine. Cid I'm not exactly sure how we how we pronounce it. I've looked at a couple of their knives before and they're they're from China. They're they're a, they're a, a lower mi, uh, you know mid lower lower middle class knife. Um they're not bad. They're not great. But I wanted to get this to demonstrate what a what a lower quality Damascus actually looks like. And this is $29 Amazon Prime, so free shipping. It just arrived. Got it overnight actually. And I'm going to demonstrate, number one, so this is, by the way, so when we talk about Damascus, and I, I've had, I've had, I've had this discussion before, what is Damascus really, and how can you tell, number one, this feels entirely different than this. And I'm going to point out a couple things, and so we're going to, we're going to review this knife, um, but we're also going to be looking at some of the key differences how do you know what it, what is how can we tell a lot of people said how did he know just by looking at this that it was fake and i'm going to tell you i'm going to show you exactly how i deduced i sleuthed i sussed it out um and and listen when you when you've messed with knives a, a while there's you know with experience you just sort of you, you come to get to get to know these things now I, i'm not saying i'm an expert and i'm not saying i'm the most there's a lot of people a lot more experienced than me but when, when you watch this, I think I'm going to show you guys that there are some key telltales that really instantly identified this as a fake. And like I said, this is not the finest quality, like a really high, well done. This is probably not handmade at all. Um, this is a, a production quality Damascus. But there are some key differences that we're going to look at right away. So first thing I want to do is I want to look at this knife. I want to review this knife. Because um, this is a, a Chinese brand that they don't steal other people's designs. They they come up with designs. Um, and like I said, I have reviewed a couple of their knives before. They're decent quality for the money you're spending. This is a VG10 Core Damascus. So what is the other steel? Obviously a carbon of some kind. What exactly is it? I don't know. But I'm going to take a step back here. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, let's explain what the Damascus process is or what is you know properly today called pattern layered steel or pattern welded steel because um, the honest truth is and, and I, I don't know if I have this in a video or not um, but so when we talk about Damascus steel we're talking about really Wootz steel which is you know not made anymore nobody we we've lost the secret for how the original Wootz steel was made in the east centuries ago um, we don't actually know how they've done that. So we give the name Damascus, yes, from the, the city in what is now Syria, um, for this pattern layered welded steel, which takes two dissimilar steels. You can do it with one steel, but it doesn't, it doesn't come out the same. And what they do is they take uh, a steel, um, primarily one with more of a stainless composition, one more of a carbon composition, and they layer them, you know, a B A B A B, and then they they forge weld them, or they which means using the heat to compress these these layers of steel into one billet. Um, now that can be very tricky because not every kind of metal wants to stick to each other. Not every kind of steel 
wants to stick to every other kind of steel. Um, they have different melting points, and some of them just won't laminate with each other without using different kinds of additives. Anyway, so when they do that, they take it, and then they keep folding it and folding it and folding it and folding it, and, and that's why you get all this pattern in it, because you're taking the layers and folding them and making these creases and swirls and stuff. When it's all done, you know, and, and so what they're doing is they're, sorry, they're taking the, the layers and hammering them out till they're thin and folding, and they'll, so they, and they can switch. They can fold, you know, um, sorry, I'm all zoomed in here, but they can fold on the long edge, they can fold on the short edge, you know, and that gives them the patterns. And then expert knife makers know how to put different patterns in to get the pattern they want. Bird's eye, raindrop, ladder. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. They can they can cut lines in, um, like with a with a grinder or even a chisel, and then fold, and that gives a certain pattern. They can drill holes in and then fold, and that gives them a pattern. They can do all sorts of things. Um, so once they have taken their billet and then they have um, ground their edge and they've, they've made their knife basically out of the blank, they give it a dip in acid. Ferric chloride is a very common one. And what that does is the stainless steel resists the acid more than the carbon. And that's why you end up with the color difference and that brings out the patterns that it's been folded. And what you see is the, the carbon type steel uh, basically is burnt more, is is etched by the acid. And etched is not a bad word because that's actually what's happening. It's 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 eating away at that that layer. Um, and so you have that, that shiny um, stainless layer and then the darkened acid etched or burned. Now we say etched as in a bad way that I'll say in a minute, but that acid burned away um, a carbon layer and that's what gives Damascus its look and then you can polish the, the top layer very nicely. Um, <clears throat> in fake Damascus, okay, I'm sorry, gotta go back. Now, true Damascus versus, uh, there's, there's, there's a debate. Some people say that the only Damascus steel is steel that is made um, by hand in a forge, and that, that is, ex and usually that's high quality. It takes a very good um, smith to make a, a good pattern weld. I have tried my hand on it and it, ha, in, it has been disastrous because if you're, like I said, not all steels want to stick together and you end up with uh, inclusions which are like air bubbles inside the steel where everything doesn't doesn't perfectly stick. Uh, it delaminates sometimes where it peels away. It, it You have to be very skilled to do this right and that's why a true handmade Damascus is so expensive. It, it, you're, you're paying for the materials that go into it, but more than that, you're paying for the years of experience that that bladesmith has put into learning how to do this and the time and effort that it takes to make it come out right. Um, there is also, by the way, ways to do it more efficiently and cheaper in a production system. And it, they have machines that will take the steel, heat it, um, you know, with electrical conduction, stick it, fold it. And it, it is, it, in a sense, because it is two dissimilar steels, heat welded together, folded and 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 flattened and folded and flattened, it is by the, by definition, it is still pattern welded steel. It is still layered um, steel as Damascus steel is. It's just not done by hand. And when you get this, Pakistan has a big history of doing it and, you know, when you get it from certain places, you have no idea what the steel actually is. Um, there are a lot of companies that now feature uh, this, what I call production Damascus. So it is, li it is literally the same kind of thing. It's just not done by hand. And you are taking a little crapshoot because it's not done by a master smith who puts their own, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into it. But that doesn't mean it is fake. It doesn't mean it is fake. It doesn't mean it's just etched on or lasered on or, or painted on or whatever. It is legitimately different metals, you know, uh, forge welded together and then put out. But that's why you can find what is actually, I mean, legit Damascus by definition for a cheap price out there. Not all of them are good. Not all of them are the same, but are, you know, in some reputable companies, they, that's why I, I say this is a real Damascus blade for $29. It is not the same quality that you would get if you commissioned um, Jay Nielsen 
to hand make you a blade that would cost you thousands. It's not. But it is a, a real two different steels forge welded together, hammered out, pro probably with air, you know automatic hammering devices, and then ground into a blade. This thing is nothing of the sort. And there's a lot of these out there, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna tell you how you can how you can kind of spot that after we look at this. So this has a VG10 core, and then it has the um, the two the, the whatever carbon steel. VG10 is a, originally a Japanese steel. Um, I like it. It's not a super high end steel, but for an EDC steel, it has good corrosion resistance. It holds an edge well, not great, um, and it is not incredibly hard for you to sharpen and maintain on your own. Um, it is not typically what I what I like in a Damascus. My favorite Damascus combinations that I think come out really good are uh, 15 and 20. It's a nickel, it's a nickel steel. Um, five and, f but it's, I'll put it in text if I'm getting it wrong. And then something like, uh, you know, 1095. That's a very commonly used um, pair for, for Damascus and it comes out very nice. Um, so the VG10 is the stainless in this, again, Spyderco really started, I, th I think was one of the big production brands that introduced VG10 to the American market. Um, and it, it's a, it's, it's a very good steel and, and Spyderco still uses it. Um, but you know, a, a lot of other companies have picked up on it too. So you see in this, we've got our, our pattern. Um, We've got some nice layer G10. So you have this black laminate on top of the OD green. This comes in some different colors. Nothing fancy. It's just kind of a simple straight handle. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Um, you've got a clip that is tip up right hand only. Very, oh, very tough retention on that clip though. Like I would almost want to bend it a little bit um, to get it to be a little easier in my pocket. But um, internally, um, just a couple of steel liners, no skeletonization really. Just very simple. Um, I this feels like bearings, and I think that as it breaks in, it will loosen up a bit. Um, but you can see that it, the Damascus pattern, you know, extends all the way around the flipper and everything. Um, I'm using my other thumb because I cut my thumb today and it hurts. Um, but decent action, a little bit off centered, but I'm I, I'm not again I'm not worried about it. I just picked this knife looking for a an inexpensive example. I mean, it's, it's very similar actually, in terms of it's a little bit heavier, um, but it if we put them uh, nose to nose, it's it's a very very similar size on everything. One of the things I want to take note of, and one of the first things I noticed when messing with this the Tecto Alara, is that you can actually feel that these darker sections are slightly raised from the shiny sections. Again, when we're talking about Damascus, the darker sections should be a little bit depressed from the shiny sections. Because remember, the acid is eating into the steel. So um, to have it raised up tells me that it's, it's something on top of. It's not truly uh, etched in that acid. It's not really been eaten in that acid. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense. Now, when we look at this, uh, and, and this is something you'd have to do, but if I run this little tiny point along it, it skates nicely along the steel, nice and smooth, and then drops just like a thousandth of an inch into the, the, um, the darker areas because that's where it has been e eaten. I was about to say something naughty. That's where it's been eaten away by the acid, okay? Another thing that I wanna point out is that when you look at the Alara, every single one, and I noticed the picture in the, in the book was exactly the same. I mean, exactly the same pattern as this. And when I started looking at other people's knives online, every single pattern is the same because they're just putting it on the blade. They've got a they've got a program that you know they're just recreating. Now I'm going to show you uh, the picture on Amazon when I looked at the listing of this. Do you see the pattern that's on the blade in the picture? And do you see how the pattern on the knife here does not match that? It shouldn't match that. I mean, it should look similar, but it shouldn't match the lines exactly. 
because there's really, I mean, unless you are an absolute Smith and God, there's no way to replicate the exact folds and lines and patterns from one domestic blade to another. Unless it's like just simple, like a couple layers. I mean, it, it really, it isn't. So every blade should be a little bit different because every blade is cut from a different part of that blade stock, of that, of that steel stock. Um, and then ground. If every single blade, every single blade has the exact same waviness, I mean, to the millimeter, and the exact same pattern, something's up, something's wrong. It, 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 that's too perfect. Um, and it shouldn't, they shouldn't all look exactly the same. And it shows that there is a, a machine putting that pattern one after another, after another, after another on the blade. I mean, it just is. Um, so, I mean, that's something to look out for. Uh, I wish you guys could just, I mean, if you feel this, this feels like a, it just, it has more of a solid feeling too. Um, it is slightly more thicker, but you can you can feel that this has raised metal, um, and it just feels right, and this just doesn't. This feels coating. You feel coating on it. I mean, um, this is what a domestic blade should feel like, and and like I said, it is a bit heavier. There, so there are there are a few ways to to tell when you're looking, but one of the key things again is making sure that you have those. Uh, depressed uh, darker sections and the raised shiny sections um, now you, sometimes it all depends on the grind sometimes you'll have uh, the area near the bevel sometimes that's going to be the the uh, stainless steel sometimes that's going to be on the carpet steel. it all you know it all depends on how they grind it so looking for that that doesn't necessarily tell you anything um, that can be whatever and you know so that whether or not it has the the carbon at the bottom or whatever and this is i mean this would be really weird if it just suddenly stops um, and there's no more pattern at that point like you managed to grind it all the way down to that one layer in there i mean that's and that's a pretty thick layer if that's if, if this was all pattern folded and everything and then it was just this one layer at that point Weird, weird, unless they, they did some kind of sand mai where it was like Damascus all on the outside and just one thick layer of carbon steel on the inside. I'm just saying, it, it's weird. Um, so, uh, you know, just like I said, different ways to tell. And I've talked about checking for, for I'm pretty sure I did a, a video very similar to this before, but I just wanted to follow up. So yeah, $99 for a for a less expensive Damascus is not out of the question. That's that's not a problem. Um, there was another another one I, I saw online that I was contemplating, and I probably will get it too, just to show you guys. But again, the quality of the Damascus that you're getting is is substantially different than, than a really high quality handmade blade. Um, it wasn't the price that told me this was not a real Damascus blade. Um, number one, I had this handle design I had seen before. I knew that. Um, but number two, it was just the feel, the weight, and especially when I started looking at the way that the the lines were just just too. It just felt off. I mean, it felt off. And man, I, I wish I I just wish there was like touch o vision so I could have you guys feel the difference in blades. Um, but. You know, a lot of times, I, I would say if you're looking to get something that is truly Damascus, and some people would, would say I'm wrong for calling this Damascus because it does not come from a master smith or something. And I everybody's entitled to their opinions, and I understand it. I get it. Um, but if you're looking for a true Damascus blade, a true pattern welded blade, um, buy from a decent brand. Don't buy from a brand nobody's ever heard of before because before this unboxing, nobody heard of Tectos. Um, now... I get it. A new brand's got to start up somewhere. Okay, it's, it's fair. Um, but when you can go and look at their their it, like, if you do a little research, I always do a little research on a new brand before I buy it, and you can find out that they're repackaging a whole bunch of cheap made in China knives. Probably not not the guys to trust. I'm just saying. And then BattleBox doubled down, even after it was proven that they were they were dealing with a bad brand. Um, they offered everybody that unsubscribed 
a free one of these at a $99 value to resubscribe. So, so the uh, Citibian uh, ST401 Damascus folder, decent knife for a decent price. Um, do I have, before I even say that, I should probably test the edge out, right? Ooh, very smooth, very smooth cutting. I don't, oh, I do have 550 cord here. Let's switch it up. Let's start right here. Very nice. And we'll just slice through. Yeah, so nicely done edge. We'll do all of our usuals. Um, slices through very nicely and the pull. And the pull through is very nice too. So it comes out of the box ready to cut. You don't have to do anything. Um, bevels look pretty even on both sides. So, you know, good quality control and everything from a $29 knife. Um, and you got something interesting going on. I'm not a big fan of the laminate, but what it does is it provides you some grip. So, uh, you know, you got some wet conditions um, or, you know, wearing gloves or whatever, where you don't have that good feel from your fingertips. It provides you with a little bit of grip. Clip, I don't feel at all in my hand, not even a little bit. Um, so this is a decent, I'm sorry, I just, it's, the, the lock is good. Um, you got a little, I would prefer a little bit more cut out there to get my hands on it. Um, but I just, I'm having trouble with this. This hurt little thumb, this little piggy. Backspacer is, I think it's actually a G10 backspacer, not plastic. But overall, you know, $29. Not a bad buy if you're interested in, in, in having a blade like this that is really a blade like this. I'm just, I'm showing options. You don't have to, you don't have to break the bank to have a nice looking blade. Um, We'll see how this one holds up. I'll carry it around for a while. We'll see. But anyway, what are your comments, guys? What do you think? I'd love to know what you folks out there think of affordable Damascus versus the real deal hand forged. Um, are you a fan? Are you not a fan? Some people are very opposed, very opposed to production Damascus. I think that it's, I, I'm not opposed. I, honestly, I'm not opposed. I think it's, it's, if it's well, if it's done well enough, it's done well enough. Yes, if it's done crappy, it's done crappy, and I wouldn't want it, but that's just my thought. Um, so I promise this is the last follow-up video unless something incredibly stupid happens relating to this knife. I'm going to get rid of it, send it to its its owner. Um, but there we go. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what your guys' thoughts are on, on this final installment, on this knife. Um, it is. It does look like an interesting brand, and... For the most, like, I have not seen them copy designs from other people. I have seen their knives look as original as you can get in this price range, you know, because, I mean, they everybody's done just about everything. But uh, I'll have some cool new um, project knives to show you guys soon, some new reviews coming up. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm looking to pick up a new box subscription soon. Oh, by the way, this totally funded by the Patreon team. Um, that's where this money came right out of. So thank you very much to the Patreon guys and all of your support for helping bring stuff to the channel at large. Awesome dudes and dudettes. And thank all you guys for uh, watching and keeping this channel going, especially amid all the controversy and the drama. All the drama. You guys are all awesome. I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back again real soon.